you want me to read? Please, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. We're going to talk about it. I'll just quickly go through the script for our remotely conducted open meetings. Just so you know, members of the public wishing to participate must use their full name for Zoom access um, um, so that it shows up in the uh, in the video. Full names are not used. People will not be allowed to participate in the discussion. The town reserves the right to remove any member of the public from the meeting who doesn't use the full name or acts inappropriately. Um, as a preliminary matter, this is, this is Peter Kahn, who's chairing our meeting today. Uh, permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated in the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Scott? Here. Steve? Here. Lynn? Lynn. Rob? Here. Ralph? Peter? Here. Um, Bill. Bill? Here. Here. Mm -hmm. Gary's here. Gary, Donna, Patty, <coughs> Kathy, and we heard from Peter. So we have a quorum. We don't have any speakers today. This open meeting of the Advisory Committee of Non-Voting Taxpayers is being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. Insur ensuring public access does not ensure part public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not will feature public comment. For this meeting, the advisory committee is of non voting taxpayers is convened by video conference as well as in person, as posted on the town website, identifying how the public can join. Um, All right, All right sounds good. Okay, so thank you, Kathy. Um, so, first order of business is to approve the agenda, which has been circulated. Do, do I have a who's in the notice? I'll, I'll so move. Second. Anyone opposed? Seeing none, we'll approve the agenda. And then the uh, minutes were also circulated from our last meeting of August 19th. Do I hear a motion to approve the minutes? Approve. So moved. A second? Second. Any opposed? Hearing none, we'll approve the minutes as well. Okay. So um, today's meeting, the thought was to devote the, the time to um, discuss what we uh, what we want to look towards for our sort of next the next year's uh, um, uh, agenda, so to speak, as to the issues we want to focus on. Um, and in that regard, you'll recall that everyone was asked to sort of put forward their top three concerns uh, and uh, appreciate you having done that. And um, we uh, sort of tallied them a little bit, but sort of uh, a lot, <laughs> but they, they sort of fall into uh, what you might expect. So let me let me give you the the, the highlights and then we'll, 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 we'll go into some depth. Um, the issues that uh, were of most concern were town government, the study, and uh, how we, we should deal with that, climate climate change issues, public safety, congestion, noise, nuisance, infrastructure issues, uh, affordable housing in the Nantucket economy, uh, and uh, generally uh, just our outreach, public relations, for lack of a better term, public relations outreach. Um, so um, I guess, uh, on the let me let me let's start with the town government study group and um again i mean this is just to, to air our, everybody's views on it uh, obviously as we um as we get closer and really into it all of this will be refined and and uh, donna's our representative on the group and i think like the strwg where we were on that uh, we got our sort of a quote unquote instructions from the committee and we'll continue continue to do that um but there, you know, there really are sort of a uh, uh, two two issues, uh, or at least you know, two issues. One is the actual form, you know, the form of the government. You know, will it change uh, from a uh, from the regular town meeting, just open town meeting that we have now, to a representative town meeting where you've got sort of uh, representatives from various sections, or or the other possibility, there are many possibilities. Another possibility would be to have a town council form of government with a town manager uh, without, and then do away with the, with the town meeting per se. Um, and then the second, the uh, the second part of that would be for us, you know, what what role, if any, do, do we have? Do the non-voting taxpayers have? Um, I think it's fairly, it's, I haven't done a legal study, but I think it's pretty obvious that it would be illegal under Massachusetts law uh, for us to have a, vote in a as a sitting member of a, of a town board we can't we don't have a right to vote unless and we could easily do that if you want to live here six months in a day so that's your choice 
Uh, but that said, uh, there's nothing to stop the the, the um, town council uh, or a, a form of town council to have a member, uh, sort of a non-voting member. You know, for so there are lots of different alternatives in that regard. But I throw it open uh, to you know hear your views and what you know what we should be doing uh, to if you know to, to sort of um, move this move this forward. Um, okay. Um, first of all, can we welcome the people? Oh, of course. Of course. <laughs> um, I don't know if they want to say their names. I don't know, but thank you for coming. Thanks. Yeah. yeah you're doing. Yeah, I, I purposely didn't ask your names because I didn't want to. You, you, well, you have you Phil, <laughs> Bonnie, Baldassano, and right. our house is down the street. Excellent. Pleasant. Great. And Darlene and John Dean Shell. Great. Do you? I, um, before, I mean, I could open it up in this regard too. I mean, uh, because you may not want to stay for the whole meeting. If there's something a particular issue that's on your mind, would be we'd be happy to take that up first. Uh, we're we're mostly interested in the short term rental because we do such. Yep. Yeah. We, we have seen some of the meetings online, so okay. we're somewhat familiar with your okay good doings. good just. You're just here to enjoy it. <laughs> okay, we're, we're, we're going to get to the short term rental, but this was really on the agenda first. So, as well. Okay, okay. Um, I was thinking about the town government and uh, as the you know, the stars, all this uh, short term rental thing took forever to, a day to do. I don't assume that the government will be changing anytime soon, but I also thought it was more the benefit for the non voter if we maybe pursue this idea of a um town meeting, if you will, for non-voters in that you you could gather with the selectmen, um, with the town manager, and welcome non-voters to have their own town meeting and not frame it that way, like our own town meeting, because I don't want the us versus them, but give the voters, the non-voters, a voice, if not a vote. And I don't see particularly any benefit just off the cuff if, if they change to uh, a town manager, former government, or, or what we have that. But if they change the government, I'm not sure the non voters have any more voice in any other government because we are non voters. But I would like our focus to be on maybe getting some form of town meeting just to have our voices heard. Yeah, a little just a little history for those who haven't been around for a while. Um, there, and we we touched upon this a little bit last time. Let me go. There there is, and it doesn't mean that there can't be approved, but there there is this annual civic uh, league meeting every July, I believe it is, where uh, the civic league sponsors um, a a meeting with the um, with the town manager and uh, the select board. Uh, to discuss whatever is on the Civic League's mind. And as I understand, the Civic League is sort of a consortium of the various um, uh, local um, uh, sectional uh, groups, whether it's Sconset or whatever, Grand Point. Um, and so I assume that, and that, and so I assume it would be something that you have in mind is something, is something like that, maybe more formalized. I do, I mean, I like you, I'm concerned. I don't want to, one of the things that's important is that we not, this not be a us versus them thing. And, 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 it, and then we've worked hard to, Certainly on the STRWG, to, you know, although you know, to, to show them that we, you know, we want this for everybody, that you know, not not the us versus them kind of thing. Um, uh, I do think that the um, um, we could the, the town there could be town government form, which would give us more more than I mean, a vote is the ultimate. Right, decision making, right. but their influence in the sense that we could be in the deliberations. In other words, you could imagine that where you have a non-voting member of the board who is actually in the deliberation speaks, and many of these things are actually done by consensus. You know, when the various committees that we're all on. I mean, it turns out you know, when many committees, you know, it, yes, there maybe it has to be a registered vote, but I'll, I'll, you can certainly have a lot of influence that way. Um, and also, this you know, the advisory you know, we call the advisory group. Of advisory committee, rather, it was set up by the board to advise them. Now, maybe they need to be reminded of that every once in a while, uh, in a nice way. That you know, uh, and uh, but I, I think we need. It, I, I, I happen to think that it would be nice to see if we could move it more in the direction of having a seat at the table that we can. And I don't know, Donna, where do things stand? Um, it's already been projected that it may be a five-year study. Well. Wow. Um, the other thing, and these are my words, the other thing is just like we had a consultant for, and, and 
uh, Kathy, you may know more about this, but um, the fact that we had a consultant and now we have a consultant for um, the uh, search for the new uh, captain, police, police yes. Chief. I suspect there may be a consultant for this as well. We need somebody to guide us in this study. Um, I would think at least there'd be some modifications. And along with that, and thanks to Steve and Patty, our voice is louder. And I suspect as we move along in workshops that we will have, we will not vote because that's not part of the law, but we will have more of a voice. And I think that will be very helpful. Between having a voice and the PR, um, I'm confident that we will play somewhat larger role in this, but it will take a while. Yeah, I haven't, I mean, it's, you know, I haven't been through the SWTR, that's the short-term rental working group and having had a um, facilitator for lack of a better word, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not convinced uh, I mean, I think in this case, in, you know, in this case, is it Cliff Barnes? What's, what's uh, Curtis Barnes? Curtis, 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 Curtis Barnes is spearheading. Yeah, I, he happens to be. He happens to be very good, and highly respected yes. uh, member of the community. Uh, I think he could do just as good a job and save the town a lot of money. Uh, uh, you know, I mean, I, I must say, I'm, 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 the town has it seems to be going to. You know, every every issue has got a got a facilitator, which is kind of crazy. Well, uh, yeah. we can't talk to each other. I don't understand that. Well, but. no, I think we can, and hopefully, we improve the, yeah. the process yeah. by having someone maybe guide rather than run. Um, and I think the town has learned and from this it, past yeah. experience. Why does that be five years? I guess it's like. Um, I don't know, but along the lines, I've I've read it somewhere about. It sounds the like it's trying to keep yeah. themselves I, this in power. This takes a long time, even if they come to some consensus. Yeah. To then implement it, it oh. takes a lot of time. To yeah. Do that. So the I, process to get to the, oh, end, the end. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. 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 Okay. And, and, and basically creating an organizational chart, which is very important. So everybody knows how everything works, even that. And so I, that's why I think maybe we'll do modifications to start. To overhaul something is uh, monumental. Could I don't we, know. Could we just go back to the, the point uh, that I made about having a town meeting mm -hmm. for non-voters. Mm -hmm. If the civic, if you, th if you think, I've never been to it, if you think the civic meeting is thus, can we utilize Steve <laughs> and make help them make that more known? Because I think the whole um, elephant in the room is non-voters feel like we pay all the taxes, but we get no voice. If that is a perception, <laughs> Um, that we could work to change that mm -hmm. without any kind of uh, maneuvering on, on on a big scale and just making known that there is a civic meeting or if we talk to the selectmen and say, we'd like to move forward to this, can we do this next year as a trial run? Something to move forward on the idea that help the non-voters feel like they're being heard. It's, it's perception. I think... I think the Nantucket Civic League does an excellent job of publicizing this. Really? They do. Never Are you a member of your civic local civic league? So they're supposed to also reinforce that with their members. Oh. Um, sometimes in July, you get a, a lot going on in town. So it, it gets lost in the noise, but they've been very big on this and and started this maybe two if not three years ago at least, at least yeah so they need a what they need is a better forum than the auditorium at the library if they could high if school. we could suggest the high school as a, a place and that so would you've be been one. yes is there a really good and it's out? all it's also on youtube mm -hmm. and uh, you can zoom it's a into room. it it's a full room they fill yeah. the uh, yeah. And, you know, they the fill room's the not big enough for who they need, and it's a yeah. Saturday morning, Gary. No, no, it's not. Okay. Yeah, Tuesday. Yeah, it could be a Tuesday morning because I know I have my it meeting. with another meeting. Yeah. yeah. So you you can watch it on YouTube. So you might not be able to see how many people have really participated. Mm -hmm. And in the summer, you have a lot of people who are still working who are here. So they'll see it later. But the Civic League started here in 1911, and they are the original founding 
for the whole island. And so Sconset was 1933 Sorry. or 37. And so all the local associations came later and they're under the umbrella. So, Sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. That's the, great. Well, I think the <laughs> uh, you know the Civic League is not limited to non-voting taxpayers. No, right? it's, so it's, it's for everybody. It's, so we, I mean, we Monomoy. Yeah, it's a big active group. Yeah, and right. I, it's never been. Yeah, we could. I mean, we could quote unquote. I mean, we may have in the past co-sponsored. We can think about. No, let me doing let that. me explain. Yeah, the Civic League has been doing this for 25 years or 30 years, yeah. and we were a co-sponsor for 10 years or 15 years. Some at some point, five or ten years ago, I don't know. I don't know the, the details. Um, we and uh, Bill, what's our former member, Bill, uh, Bill Sherman? Bill Sherman. Bill was the one that told me that at some point, I think they were looking for financial contribution sure, to was... support the event, and our committee didn't have any money, right. so we became a non-sponsor. And it became just Civic League alone. But for many, many years, it was a combined sponsorship of Civic League and the Advisory Committee for Non-Voting Taxpayers. So they have two main things. Meet the candidates for anything that you're electing for the resident. And this is really their attempt to encompass everyone and include the non-resident taxpayer. They have meet the articles. And yeah, meet the articles, meet too. The articles and meet the yeah. And okay. If I may, I'd like to address this issue as well, um, because uh, I, I am I'm wary about our group trying to continually reinvent the wheel. And by that, I mean that there is uh, currently, in addition to this group, uh, which has basically biweekly meetings all summer long, and with the advent of virtual meetings, we meet year round, but not on such a you know aggressive schedule and anybody can you know come to our meetings either in person or virtually and raise virtually any issue they want doesn't mean there'll be agreement on the issue so that's number one number two um i know many of you have gone to the select board meetings uh that are almost weekly and every one of those meetings starts out before any other business with public comment. Uh, and I know, you know, I've, I've seen uh, members of this group make public comments on things that are of import to them. Anybody can do it. And, and, and uh, I think one of the issues really that Patty raises, is not just how do we all jawbone together, but how do you get whatever we're interested in in front of the people that actually vote and do something. And that's that's one way to do it. Another way to do the same thing is through our committee, by our committee writing to and addressing issues with the select board. Finally, on this sort of three-legged stool of, um, uh, I would call it non-voter access to government, uh, you have the town meeting itself. And our committee for many, it was, since it uh, was formed, uh, has a voice at the town meeting and starting, I think a year or so ago, um, the law was amended in a, an amendment that we supported uh, that permitted the moderator of the town meeting, uh, the discretion to entertain comments from anybody, not just voters on Matthew, uh, matters of uh, importance to the town. And uh, so it's incumbent on anybody who has an issue that really is burning uh, them uh, to contact the moderator. And, and, and for example, if this committee does, has not taken up your position or a position on this issue, uh, you can contact the moderator in advance of the town meeting and say, I would like to speak and blah, blah, blah. So I, I think there is a lot of voice. The problem is there are no voices. Uh, I'm, 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 I, I would be amazed if one were to hold uh, a, yet another forum that you'd be able to fill the school auditorium, much less the uh, uh, the uh, the auditorium at the uh, uh, the library, the name of which is escaping me right now. But uh, uh, so I, I think the point is that maybe one of the things we need to do 
is to uh, educate our fellow non-voting taxpayers about all the opportunities there are to be heard. And that's just my thoughts on this subject. <clears throat> you know, it may have a bit of a substantive interest here too, because it, one of the critiques I've heard and you know, may have validity or not is that the town meeting, uh, you know, it's a, a packed first day where uh, you know, matters of, of, of interest and zoning are addressed. Second day is a few hundred people where a lot of other issues are addressed. So we have a relatively condensed distilled electorate that's deciding, you know, yes or no on, on, on a lot of issues. We're not voters. We're not going to be voters without a constitutional amendment here. But I, I think our lot is best thrown in with a wider electric, electorate to the degree that we do move to a, a, a representative form of government. It's clunkier in terms of it's not an annual town meeting that will decide things. It's going to be elections and indirect. But I'd much rather throw in with the you know 12, 10, 10, 000 voters we've got or twelve thousand voters we've got than with the two hundred who show up the second day. Uh, and I think probably at the end of the day our interests are more aligned with a broader uh, electorate than a, a much narrower group. But do you see? I guess a question that Scott is. I mean that that broader group would would be um, possibly electing you know representative mem members on the on the town council yeah, or yeah. what um, so so it would, it would distill itself down to still a few a, a relatively few. right but at least they're 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 elected and the the, the second critique yeah. is that the board uh, the select board doesn't have enough executive authority as it is mm -hmm. so you know but but they are accountable to be in, 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 in elected as opposed to the folks who show up the second day um, you know uh, deciding what goes on so. I, I think we do have some substantive interest there. I think um, going back to that, that's that's one main reason why we are developing a town study group because people do realize that the second day is just a couple of hundred people mm -hmm. and to decide what's going on. So I'm hoping that as we get into, we delve into um, the study itself, that you know we'll be able to, and as a representative, I will bring forth our concerns loud and clear so that we can become more of a voice. What that will be is to be determined. I think that um, the, what Peter said, though, that you know, let's say we're five years out, you know, doing some education about oh, sure. the voice that you do have and not yes. you can take advantage of right now. Makes sense. Sure. That's a good point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to add to uh, Peter's list there. Uh, the town uh, employees, you can make appointments with them and talk with them directly, which I have done in the past. I sat down with the finance director uh, over an issue I, that I was interested in. I was actually able to make a report mm -hmm. to this uh, committee. Well, that's also, I mean, also, as, as you know, we all, we, you know, most of our meetings have a, a speaker, quote unquote, somebody from the town government who appears. And so this gives us and certainly any of the members of the public who attend an opportunity to have a real, you know, sort of one on one. Uh, and and, and uh, I must say, for me, that was one of the primary reasons to get involved. I mean, <laughs> you don't have to get that kind of access, uh, which is which is yeah. So I have some thoughts. Um, by the way, uh, I, although I think Curtis, is bold in coming up with his proposal because he has a point of view. It probably wouldn't well permit him to become the moderator. And I know they are talking with people in the Massachusetts Municipal Association to find someone who's been through this that may be able to give us some wisdom, mm -hmm. maybe serve as a moderator. Uh, in thinking about the different types of form of government, and I, sp I spent a lot of time over the last several years attending and sometimes commenting on the original town study, town government study group. Uh, and the conclusion I came to, just my personal view, was that the best form for getting more input from non-voting taxpayers would be the representative form of government, because at the end of the day, there'd be maybe 200 representatives selected for each little section of the island, we could be, end up with 150 turn. And that those representatives would become our legislature and they would, so in theory, each representative would be able to listen to 
to residents of their particular community, voting and non-voting taxpayers, right? And residents, and then come to a conclusion as far as the legislation that goes before the town meeting. Uh, another benefit of the representative form of government is that they don't have to meet once a year or twice a year. They can meet every month and they can get things done that need to be done on a timely basis. And I have one other thought. Uh, Patty keeps talking about getting the views of the non-voting taxpayers. Um, there are 8,000 of us and, we, and ne we're never on the island at the same time. As you know, everyone has different travel schedules. And so, although over the years we've come thinking, we've thought about, is there a way to get a big meeting, something like that? Our particular population is so mobile and so transient and people are here some parts of the summer, they're not here other parts of the summer. I know people that are here, they keep asking for July meetings of cocktail parties and stuff for community groups because they're not here in August and vice versa. So it's very hard. The Civic League does a pretty good job of, of announcing a, a time for all voting and non-voting people who are in town at that particular time to come to a meeting and the members of the select board and the town manager have been very good about showing up and answering questions. I think the acoustics in the Anthony are just dreadful. You never hear half of what's being said, but at least they're giving it a shot. And um, I would say of all of the people in the attendance there, a third of them were town employees because Libby wants them there to make sure that people have a question about the sewers or about you know drainage or, or any other problem they have. They are there. So it's not... We don't get a big sample, even though Civic League does a pretty good job of advertising through all the civic associations. It's really, really hard to get people here in the summer and, and say, we'd like to have your opinion on something. Very hard to do. Well, we do have Zoom. That helps. A little. That's a good okay. opportunity. That's not like, 8,000 people. Some people can do 8,000 Zooms, but uh, the town can't. <laughs> all right, I'd like, I'd like to try to move, you know, try to get to go through all of these okay. if we can. I mean, um, I'm, not, I'm not sure we need to draw conclusions here other than, uh, you know, uh, sort of reflect upon this. As, and, uh, um, uh, but I think this, cause the sense is that, um, that there, there, there is, there's existing structure which, 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 which we maybe we can take advantage of and possibly improve. Okay, second issue. Uh, Sort of uh, overriding issue was public was I'm sorry was uh, climate change, and before we get to that, I, I guess Gary, I'd ask you to sort of bring us up to date on what's going on with with uh, the group that you're sitting with. Well, you know, we the town has had vigorous efforts over the last few years. We hired the the, the Arcadis firm from uh, Holland, and they did a great job, and we put together the coastal resiliency plan, and the result of that is that we have come up with 40 priorities. Now, there are probably a thousand things that need to get done thinking about the long-term. And the long-term, this plan covers uh, from now until 2100. So it's like a 75-year plan. Can't wait to see the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Um, I'm most, uh, and the thing that we are most concerned about, you know, is 2030 versus 2070. 2070 looks pretty ugly when you look at the projections. But 2030 ain't so good either because if we don't do something by 2030, those ferries may not be able to dis, uh, dispatch uh, trucks coming from off island or people. So, um, so that's why we focused on 40 priorities. And the, the struggle now is to make sure people are sensitive to that. Unfortunately, um, unless the waves are beating at your door, um, people do not have an urgent concern about it. That's the first problem. Second problem is people don't care. They want a home next to the next to the harbor or next to the water with water view. They want to put a pool in, and they're going to do that, even though we said, you know, in ten years it's gone, it projected to be gone. They're doing it. And um, only recently has the Conservation Commission come up with 
a series of enhancements to current regulations, which will uh, broaden a little bit the protections for the uh, properties closer to uh, danger from water erosion, storm surge, and things like that. But it's very hard to get people to actually change their behavior until their homes get flooded. The people on Sheep's Pond Road who've lost their house, I know the couple, I mean, I know the process. You know, he used to be the general counsel of J&J, uh, &J, George Brazzer, right? Their home is gone, you know? So, and, and I can tell you now, the Coastal Resilient Plan has shown there were 17 homes in Madikett that ain't gonna be here in 20, 15, 20 years. They're gone and we're not gonna try to, we can't save them. And so one of the things that we're looking at is how do we come up with some proposals, some, we, we have to come up with a, a scenario where we can buy properties or people can give up properties close to the shorelines, to the water's edge, and give them a tax credit so they can move in, move inwards if they want to stay on the island. Then I come up with my other idea, which is we don't have enough land. <laughs> we have to start using land bank land that is appropriate to house some of these people, whether it's for affordable housing or for people who are losing their homes to a rising tides, coastal erosion. Um, and, and right now, we're talking about massive amounts of money, more than a billion dollars, more than a billion dollars. And, you know, we're, we're fighting now for a, for a grant from the state of Massachusetts for, uh, I think it's $275,000 to come up with a plan to close the harbor during storms. In other words, there are gates and New Bedford has it. New Bedford put it in 25 years ago. Doesn't work so well anymore, but needs to be updated. And the Corps of Engineers doesn't want to spend money on New Bedford. But but um, in Holland, they do have a series of gates. They have them in Venice also, the Mose. And where? In Venice. In Venice, yeah, Venice Mose. has them and too. And it's very successful. And so we are, but you need to fund that. And the town has put aside like a million dollars a year, you know, starting this year within the budget that would, would, we've got a member of the Capital Planning Committee on our Coastal Resilience Committee now. We're going to talk about getting more funding. But at some point, how much can you ask? We really need FEMA money and we need state of Massachusetts money. And um, we're struggling because the town doesn't have an official grant writer yet. We're trying to get someone to do that. But we're competing with Boston. We're competing with Miami. We're competing with New York. We're competing with uh, the Carolina coastline, right? All of these communities are seeking the same kind of funding. And so it's, um, we have our plans, but it's-, it's Gary, what, do you, what, what role, if any, should we have besides sitting on the committee? What, what... Well, to, to me, the best thing we can do is to encourage, for instance, the, the Coastal um, the Conservation Commission came up with these proposals some of the people in the real estate industry aren't so happy about that. They don't want to limit the pool building near it, right? And they don't want to change some of the rules that are, have been in existence that help them sell property with water views close to the water. And the best thing we can do when those proposals are finalized is to send a note or just have a committee resolution saying we support the efforts to enhance these protections for our shorelines. You know, I, I don't know. I, I, just speaking for myself, the um, you know, over the years, and then you know, I mean, you know better than anybody, obviously, living out in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. I mean, this has been going on for decades. This whole issue of the uh, geo tubes and uh, what have you, and it, it was impossible for those of us who weren't living there. You know, it's it impossible to sort of follow and get the, the the gory details. But the bottom line is, you know, you know, a lot of a lot of movement and no one and and and, and nothing and nothing ultimately has happened. And I'm just afraid, at least at this stage, that there's you know, obviously a big problem, a lot of talking, but little real hardcore they action. They have a plan for already for moving back to the road. Yeah. They they do have a plan, but they need to figure out how to fund it. Yeah, right. And, and they have come up with the alternative access road, which is made, and these are all yeah. non-resident taxpayers, and even yeah. that group 
didn't get what they wanted. Some people did, some people didn't. Um, I They would be all for the wetland protection. That's the smartest yeah. thing CONCOM has yeah. done. We have a proposal that is coming up to, uh, in fact, our committee has a meeting this Tuesday, a special committee, to give the select board our input on creating something called CRDs, Coastal Resiliency Districts. Mm -hmm. The thing about a coastal resiliency district is that it's going to be um, the formula for charging the local people. In other words, we're talking about what they call betterment fees. In other words, who's going to pay? We can we can talk about the Scottsdale Block yep. or Second or some other areas, right? At the end of the day, if someone has to put up the funds, people say, well, who's going to get the benefit of that? There are 10 houses in Scottsdale that are going to get the benefit of that. And are all the rest of the people in Scottsdale going to be willing to pay? And how about the people in Madigan? They got their own problems. You think they want to pay? So the, this this creation, by the way, Massachusetts has never had one yet. So we would be the first community to start, and we have to get the Massachusetts legislature, the Home Rule petition, to approve <clears throat> CRDs. So that'll take time. Right. That, but that will allow us to get a specific funding, perhaps from third party sources, but also to charge people in the local area for the products that need to save that community and it's gonna benefit them and not, not, not necessarily other people on the island. Gary, aren't they making this a town warrant article for 2024? Um, yeah, we would like to do that. And that's why we have a special meeting Tuesday to give the select board the best recommendation we can, our Coastal Resilience Committee, because they're not, the, the select board isn't quite sure what to do about these CRDs. And we're trying to decide, you wanna make, and one of my recommendations was make the whole island a CRD and then have sub districts. And the sub districts could be Sconset, could be Grand Point. But they've could be done that in other places and they've made it so, you're taxed the highest if you're next to the water. Right. And as you go back, right. you pay a different rate, all based on your geography, but everyone pays. So That's the theory of betterment. Yeah. What I learned last meeting, on, which I was not so happy about learning, <laughs> uh, when I was reading some of the article, there was an article that we shared, uh, our committee shared, about uh, these issues in Long Island, New York, Fire Island, particularly, you know. Yes. You know, and and basically the people in the community voted on these things and they agreed to pay the extra taxes. Yeah. And they paid one case was twenty five million dollars. And that was done 15 years ago. Unfortunately, most of the benefit was wiped out about uh, two months ago by the latest storm. But but uh, but what I found out about Massachusetts law and Nantucket, which is shocking to me, is that. When you're going to do these betterments, it has to go to the town, to the annual town meeting, and it's not a, up to the vote of the local community. <laughs> so, the betterments that have been approved thus far in many areas of the island actually went to the annual town meeting. And what what they've told me is that even though the residents are going to pay the bulk of these fees for the protection. The community is not likely to support to support something <laughs> if the local community isn't for it as well. So it isn't as ugly as it sounded to me initially that the town could decide Scotch is going to be there and everyone's going to get charged. And even if the people in Scotch don't even want to protect their property, they're going to pay. So it's not quite like that. But that's the most important thing coming up now. And when the select board comes up with the idea maybe we should talk about it in the next meeting or two and provide our support saying we think this is a good idea once it's finalized. Coastal resiliency districts, CRDs. Oh, and I, I, if they are in fact going to be part of the Warren House, we would, we would, we would. We would Certainly in 24, it won't be done this year. Sure. Okay. So a quick question on, on this, Gary. It has, has the group that the, this climb, the resiliency group, uh, put it yep. easily for me, uh, what what had discussion has there been, if any, about the notion of insurance? Because this seems to be an insurance issue uh, in in the following way. Uh, we're, we're seeing it in Florida, certainly, 
But when the risks become so big for, for example, the property insurers, they, they're the first to leave, right? And, and so um, all this betterment stuff sounds a lot like you know, national health insurance or local health insurance where the community uh, has to come together with some obligation realizing there's going to be losses and how best to spread those losses out. Um, and, and I'm just wondering whether, uh, I, I have no idea whether property insurers, for example, are ready to beat a path away from islands like Nantucket that are uh, subject to all this, uh, uh, you know, climate change, uh, seawater rise, because once, once the property insurers walk away, then the, the, the real estate market kind of collapses because you won't be able to get a mortgage for those people who have to have a mortgage to buy a house and so forth. So there's an imperative here. I think it's an economic financial imperative. Um, and it sounds like this betterment program is sort of a voluntary way to um, stave off the problem. You know, I thought uh, one, of the, one of the thoughts I had at our committee is some time ago was that this problem will get solved by the insurance industry and the banking industry. Yeah. The banks will make loans and the insurance companies won't insure. Then I realized the billionaires that don't care anymore. People are buying homes for unbelievable amounts of money and they're not too worried about mortgages because they don't, need them. They don't really need them. <laughs> they may get it, they, they think it's a better use of their money. And so far the insurance rates are getting pretty high. And as you can see, some of the articles in the, la in the last few days, I saw an article in the journal in the last couple of days that really said that people are now starting to self-insure. They're giving up. Yeah. They've decided that the cost of insurance, especially in Florida, is so high that they'd rather take that money they were going to pay anyway, cross their fingers, put it aside, and hope that they build up a little bit of a nest egg because they don't want to pay the insurance companies. And a lot of the insurance companies are pulling out of California locations, California. Florida locations. And I haven't I haven't quite heard them pulling out of Nantucket, although the rates are skyrocketing based on my own personal experience and my conversation with my insurance broker uh, in Nantucket, who said, uh, you know, they lost billions and billions over the last few years and they're trying to make it up. So I don't know whether or not, Peter, um, the insurance impact will be sufficient soon enough to get people's behavior changed. That's the question. Yeah, it sounds like a kind of a one to 5% issue and the rest of the country can't afford to self-insure. And uh, especially for those who rent, you know, people are not gonna be building buildings to rent in that kind of a market and uh, leaving everybody, it's probably the wrong term, high and dry. Uh, <laughs> Definitely the wrong yeah. term. Okay, all right, anything further on this before we turn to public safety? Let's, let's take a little back at that. Uh, and looking at the comments of both, there was pedestrian and biker safety, the issue of the electric bikes, which we, we talked about uh, earlier when there was the Warren article. Um, my sense is that although it was defeated uh, at town meeting, uh, it was defeated. I guess it was yeah, it was defeated at town meeting. Uh, what they what they tried to do at town meeting, I think it was Bruce Mandel, right, right, right. who made the who, who offered the suggestion. Um, he, wanted, he wanted to change the rules so that e bikes had to go on the roads. Right. Yeah, I think that yeah, I because think, he said they're much too fast to go on the bike paths, and they were, the town basically said. We can't have <laughs> all of these bikers running. You know, you know, uh, congestion has gotten so awful. So that's why we're. Doing but it's going to. I mean, I think it's going. You know, you you heard the town, the uh, the uh, transportation planner. He he uses one himself, and you also heard. I think he, he described it as um, that. You know, you have three different levels now of, of e bikes, two of which are are fairly low speed. The one of the final the third level is quite quite fast, and it, and um, and. You're, I mean, I, I, I bike a regular bike and uh, on the bike path. And when you have the electric, some of these people on the electric bikes are really moving, really moving. So I think it's an area that we're going to need to watch. Uh, and maybe that the that we, we limit the 
you know, it's the enforcement is going to be impossible. But to try to at least get out there and say, hey, if you've got level three bike, you you know you cannot be on the you can't be on the bike path, and you can take your own risk on on the road if you want. Uh, but uh, anyway, that's so that's that's an issue. The other issue uh, we that you know, was rotaries. It was interesting that uh, I don't know if you saw that. Um, uh, the head of Act, one of the, the leaders in Act now, is uh, is is a big promoter of the Rotary at uh, at Nobodier and uh, and uh, and Seven Miles. So, so maybe maybe that'll actually be a good thing. And, you know, we've talked about Rotaries, you know, but everybody gets scared. At least the local the, the residents seem to get more concerned when it's near a school, and yet the 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 data seems to show that that even there they 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 they, they, they can be well well managed. And uh, boy, we could use probably a Rotary right by right by the high school. <laughs> Uh, and I was defeated several times. Oh, many, many times. Yeah, yeah. Many, yeah. Many times. So, you know, it's a, uh, it's a, uh, it's, uh, it's a process of education, but it also may be a process of ultimately a change in town government uh, mm -hmm. uh, that, that may bring some, because I think these, some of these were defeated by a very small group of people who were left over at the end of at the end. At the end. I think by the high school, the problem was you had Tree. hospital mm -hmm. employee houses, so you would have to take out. Yeah. Not only the tree, sure. but where are the houses going? Yeah. yeah so right. another, we're running out of land. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. And yeah. another thing, too, is that when you have ambulances going by, they don't want a road. No. Yeah. But, you know, it's time. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Yeah, but that's... <laughs> anyway, I hear you. But I mean, you know, I mean, believe me, I think in the bigger scheme of things, one second in the ambulance, if it's that long to get around the rotary, is worth saving a lot of a lot of traffic congestion the long haul. But anyway, but I hear you. There was one question that comes to mind every day, and that is why the town of Nantucket, which is so supportive of biking, mm -hmm. does not have a rule that requires people to have helmets, helmets and have mirrors on the bike. There's a place up right on Beach Street that I see they rent bikes out. And I look across it once in a while and I see there are no mirrors on any of the bikes. It's so easy. So you know, when you're driving and someone's on the road, they don't know you're behind you. Half of them have ear pods in there anyway. Okay. All they need is to have, I, I'm surprised that the town doesn't, as a matter of public safety, put a regulation in that says people that are renting bikes, you know, the, the firms that are renting bikes, young to everybody else, has to A, require he helmets, and B, have mirrors on their handlebars. Are you, are you speaking of the electric? Are you speaking of the, the, the no regular bikes? Not the motorized. Regular bikes. Not the, not All the, bikes. Not the Vespas. All bikes. Oh. I'd like to add to that. Why not say you must stay on the bike paths for regular bikes? Because what happens is these guys cycling through. It's like I'm too macho. I don't need a bike path. And then they, uh, but a cliff road, Donna, there is no bike path until you get to the bike path. Right, but the bike path. Like but yeah, but, path but to go from town to the bike path, you're on the road. I know. And there's no lawns, saying. there's nowhere to go. <laughs> but when there's a bike path and you're using you're using the road, that's that's yeah. not right. There is a Massachusetts state law that you have to wear a bike helmet if you're 16 or under. So that's up to the bike company to really? make sure any 16 year old or younger has one. Yeah, really? Yeah. Yes, yeah. It, state law. And you're supposed to only wear one of your I, 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 earpieces ear, so that you so can. You your stereo. Yeah, so, so <laughs> yeah. then that's a yeah. problem. So but then you'll see. Explain that to the police chief when he tells you so that he doesn't have staff. It's all about enforcement. Yeah, exactly. And so enforcement is yeah, it, yeah. just endless. If, yeah. if you're too dumb not to wear a helmet, at any age, then live free or can't, die. Can't help it, right? <laughs> right, wow. right. Well, anyway, this is okay. But this, is, but something to add to the list of things to, to be watching and thinking about for the next for next I, year. I think it would be almost interesting to have a, at least us monitor the bike and pedestrian mm -hmm. safety group that hasn't met in months. And Jason Bridges was the chair, and they were supposed to deal with this issue, and then no meeting came up all summer. So I I don't know if you want to consider that someone from yeah, here the when they start good idea. Sure. getting back it's just a public safety issue that yeah, yeah. i think that's and most important. of it are non-resident taxpayers perhaps that are here on vacation and not always adhering to rules that they're unaware of sure. well almost every issue on a small island comes against the fact that enforcement is so limited that what is the most fundamental rule of 
driving or biking the stop sign. Yeah. I, I would say if you did a video of bike paths, 99% of bikers ignore stop signs. What could be more fundamental? Now, there's no way of enforcing that. It's it's a law. But Well, actually, the ones on the bike paths are not. They're just please stop. There's no way. There, there's no law that they have to. So it's a real octagonal yeah, red sign that says stop. I've asked with, about that, and that's, with, what they, that's what they say. It's, with, it's not like it's not like a traffic stop sign. It's not. It's not on a road, so it doesn't it's have because the same it's meaning. not on a road. It's thing. not enforced. But the same is true of, you know, a cliff road or, or, or any any non bike path area right. where there's a stop sign. The the assumption of the biker is that they ignore the, it. They the ignore it. The street don't apply to them. They can get in trouble for ignoring a street yeah. stop sign. Has anyone seen the? Uh, bicycle tied yeah. to a stop sign. I pass it every day when I ride out there. On the Colthus Road. Yeah, Wisconsin. Going into Wisconsin. Yep. A couple of years ago, a uh, very wealthy, successful lawyer, lawyer, tax lawyer from Washington, D.C., who had a house in Maryland, was going liggety split on the bike path. And he came to one of those intersections where there's a driveway uh, perpendicular to the highway. And he never stopped. He just ran straight into a vehicle that was coming in or out of that road. Tragic. Yeah. I don't even think there's a stop sign where he was killed. Um, so he couldn't, he's going so fast that the police said he should have, if you can ride over, if you can ride the speed limit, then you should be on the road, not the bike path. Mm -hmm. And that was what they thought he was going so fast yes. he had no ability to stop and they had no ability to see him. But there was a sign that uh, was right in front of the, of the coming road. Coming out. Yeah. Yeah. And as Kathy points out, you know, it's not a... But did he have he had something in his ears too, didn't he? I, I don't uh, know. It, I thought he did. It's tragic because he was going so yeah. fast. But I, I think as one who rides, and I'm sure others will be do as well, I mean... I don't maybe I don't stop at every driveway, but boy, I do I do try to make eye contact. I mean, I, I'm trying to follow, but it's very important. The flip side is very important too. And if you've got a property that's that that abuts the bike path, it doesn't give you that doesn't give you free reign to just sort of run you know pull right out. I mean, you need to be looking, and it's it's uh, and people are both sides are not thinking thinking carefully about it, and it's, it is it's it's a little ha it's a hazard, but there's no way I don't think you, you just have to have self self regulated. Well, we have the Peloton that comes through Sconset at 8 a.m. and earlier. What's that? And when they come down Shell oh, Street oh. and they hit the rotary in front of the post office, they don't do the rotary. They go straight opposite. Mm -hmm. So if there's a car coming, they have no way to see it. So we just wait week after week, week waiting, waiting for it's some kind of happen. tragic accident there. They're not Going following. Back. My, but my fundamental point was not to take us down into the rabbit hole of our <laughs> habitual biking experience, right. but to point out that every law, whether it's the night sky or it's coastal resiliency, will always run up against the impossibility, near impossibility of enforcement. There's no money, there's no staff. Yeah. So we, we have to be very sure that we make legislation and advice that is it can be open. well you know it can be action yeah you know it, it, it reminds me you know we, we have all these summer policemen right mm -hmm. and it'd be interesting to know you know i, I guess one of the, this gets to the point of we need to get the police chief and you know, we've been waiting that when the new police chief gets in here we need to get them in front of the room because we'll what let them happen well we should <laughs> not happen but let's you know well for example i mean we have all these young people who are working in but all they're doing is writing tickets. This is a, a money, seemingly a money generating operation as opposed to, hey, let's have some of them out there doing some of the, some of this and this in the ass enforcement. But uh, please some have, legal issue. I wonder whether we really should wait for the new police chief because he's going to walk in here and say, well, yeah. let's talk in a year or two once I know. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're in right. many ways, the old police chief, the guy you never seen. Yeah, hmm. yeah. No, you're right. And we should, but certainly it's, it's too late. I mean, well, I guess nothing's too late because we're going to be on Zoom. You can think about that, but certainly if we want to have him in person, the first thing, you know, I guess he's retiring in October. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah he's going to get him on Zoom. Yeah. He, this is the guy who yeah, just goes with Bobby Zipper. Yeah, he wrote us, a, he wrote the letter, you know, we, we had a letter from him recently, which is his boss. Yes. He must have checked out. <laughs> anyway. All right, let's put, let's put that on our agenda, uh, Kathy. Let's see if we can, maybe, we, you know, for our you know, next meeting, if we, that's, I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. uh, we had him in Wisconsin. How was he? 
It's very good. And, you know, when he first started, the first week he was police chief, there was the murder on the island. So imagine you come from Springfield, Illinois, and you're on an island, and now you have a murder. And Exciting. <laughs> like if, if he thought he was going to this nice place, <laughs> we're very resort brand. Good, good. Okay. Uh, quickly, let's we can move to the rest of it. Uh, and this sort of factor out right with what you were saying about enforcement, congestion, noise, nuisance, and infrastructure mm -hmm. issues, uh, which have always been on our radar screen. Um, and uh, certainly was sort of at the part of the, the short-term rental working group, uh, this whole issue of nuisance and noise and what have you. Um, and, uh, you know, it's um, what I think is, at least from the short-term rental side of it, looking at it, you know, it would, it would really determine July and August are the times when these issues are really a problem. The rest of the year, not so much. Uh, not so much even to, to really make a, an, issue, an issue out of it. And so, you know, can you, you know, can you put a legislation in that short period of time to really make it to make a difference? Um, uh, but on the other hand, there are issues, for example, and, and that, that do need to be addressed that are that are nuisance issues. For example, roots, these tree, tree root issues, you know, and and, and, and the sidewalks. Um, and uh, you know, it's nothing. You know, it, it, I, I'm not one for some people. I guess are for you know tearing up all the cobblestones and putting you know. So I, I think you know, obviously the cobblestones make Nantucket what Nantucket is. But there have to be some ways to at least where, the, where there are hazards, where there are really hazards to, 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 to address those because there, you can't walk home. I mean, we used to walk from Mid Island to, to dinner downtown and then come back. You can't do that anymore because the, the bright skies are not, are not clear enough to be able to see where the hell you're walking. And then you can't, uh, you can. So I think it's something we just need to keep our keep our eye on. Stuff. Yeah, they're, they're obviously the big questions, and they're not going to move easily at all. But on, on nuisance, I always wonder what low hanging fruit is that? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what are there? What, what things are out there that you know are not going to change the world, mm -hmm. but are useful? And I remember early on there was a discussion about the noise of swimming uh, uh, swimming pool equipment. Mm -hmm. You know, a large amount of which can be mitigated by noise absorbing blankets, which are not an expensive item. Right. And you know, maybe you figure out a way to uh, give them away. Mm -hmm. uh, but but. You know, I just raise that as an example of something that people probably are not going to object to as a matter of principle that they don't want a noise absorbing blanket, uh, you know, uh, you know, around their around their pool equipment. But in the category of actionable, you know, what is there on that subject that that goes not from the top down but maybe from the bottom up of things that actually could be accomplished? Maybe not the answer, but at least part, you know, something. You know, our history is we spent four years. Noise. I brought all the Palm Beach rules, yeah. mm -hmm. not just this town of Palm Beach, the, the county that limited certain kinds of heavy construction in high, in, you know, in, in the high season. And we ended up getting the town to agree to put a committee together. And they put one of our members on our committee. Is that Peter? Yeah. Peter. Um, and at the end of the day, they refused to even ban demolition on Labor Day or July 4th. They wouldn't do anything. All they kept saying was that we have a short season here in Nantucket. Unlike Florida, you can build all year, which is not really true, but because <laughs> we've got hurricanes in Florida. <laughs> but they said, we need every every good day to do our real estate construction and whether it's demolition or anything else. And so that's why, as I wake up this morning, you know, and walking around at 730, they're banging away next to me in Eastern Street, all those big mega mansions going up and they're working right through Labor Day weekend. Well, that's the definition of a heavy lift. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in terms of, you know, real money involved here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm just just thinking the bottom the bottom up might be. It actually went to town meeting. I mean, we you know well, we went you know, to town meeting. And I think we've learned over the years, and I, I certainly understandably, when you've got a community that is construction based, uh, and uh, you know they have to make it. You know, it's 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 just you know <laughs> you have to realize you got to live with that within certain boundaries. That's one of the that's one of the same thing with the same thing with the traffic issue too. You cannot just you know you just can't ban. Uh, unfortunately, you know the the equipment. 
uh, that they need. I think what you, what you can try to do is meet with them and talk to them and see if there's some, you know, maybe there's some compromise during certain hours that they might be willing to do, but to put it to the voters, yeah. you know, forget it. I think there is one thing you can do, though, because there are different hours for ongoing construction, uh, new construction, landscaping. If you made it all the same, because so... We had that debate, and Peter, you were probably the person in FinCom when I was testifying for Sconset, but um, when they changed it for the Town Historic District and the SOH from eight to six and eight to five on Sundays or 10 to five on Sundays, that was the idea was they would test that out and see if you got any complaints over a certain amount of time and then analyze it for the rest of the island. So you could go back and entertain the idea that, no, you can't take construction away in July and August, but you could limit it. So it's finished by six o'clock. So you could have dinner outside without someone bulldozing next to you. And you could make landscaping the same as construction, because if I go around the streets in Sconset and I'll stop um, a landscaper and say it's 7.05, and they're like, so, and they act like they've never heard of this rule, right? But the leaf blowers are still using the gas powered. Yes, yeah, so and so true. then you then you go after them and go, and they're like, "Oh, really? I had no idea." And they all they all know, but if the rule was simpler, and you can't say, "Oh, well, I thought construction was this because landscaping is that," uniformity makes it easier to educate. So I, I wouldn't give up yet, Gary. One of the things that I, I wish we would get back to, though, is, is and Scott used the term actionable uh, ideas. This group doesn't seem to have um, a lot of breadth in, in terms of the community. It, it, what goes on in the room is discussed, and then we talk about these are the problems. Hopefully today we would come up with three items that we really want to stand behind or what are we standing for? What are we doing? What are, we're talking a lot, but what are we doing? And, and I like your idea on, on um, we need maybe grassroots solutions to some of these problems. If we're not going to have a new town council in, in, for five years, what can we do? Can we make some of these ideas um, that or, or, or items that are actually doable now publicized so that non-voters know about them or realize that um, I would say that would be our job is to let non-voters know what they have in terms of rights and opportunities. I also think with the police, they can't, the town can't afford a lot more policemen. They could get somebody on a phone for 24 hours, seven, answering questions on noise or whatever so that people can put in complaints. Then you have a database of where the issues are or what's happening. And, they and have that. people have a voice and then they can say, okay, we've had this much activity in this area. We need to respond to it. But we don't come up with any actionable items. We talk a lot. So what can we boil this down to? Well, I'm not sure. Well, I'm not sure I totally agree with that. Uh, I mean, we have, you know, we've, Short-term rental, we came up with those. So, you know, we were the ones who ultimately shaped that. Shaped that. Um, you know, we it, it, it does require some talk. I mean, and the fact of the matter is, today, for example, was not intended to be a uh, decision-making. At least in my mind, wasn't. It was. This is the day to sort of lay out what you know. What are these? What are the issues? So that every, and, and think to think about it, and then to say, okay, we'll devote X. You know, the next, certain meetings to certain issues, and then and through that process, become focus on you know, we'll focus on uh, public safety. And say, okay, these are the these are the things that we're concerned about. Um, but it, yeah, it does. You know, Rome wasn't built in the night and, and that day, rather, and uh, it's, it, that does take some time. Yeah, I'd like to make a suggestion. You had said something. I had brought up the term actionable because we're talking in big terms. But if we did one thing at a time, that Scott was saying also, um, you mentioned something about um, the bike paths and the bikes and the, the companies. There's a committee. There's a committee. Mm -hmm. And we talked about that. Well, let's bring them in and let's see if we can follow through on enforcement because that's our next concern. First is, what do we want to do? Second is, how can we have it actionable? And having them come and going over the whole thing about um, 
the levels of bikes that you were talking about and see if there's some way we can pursue this, follow it and see how we can enforce it. Try something small and then build on it. Well, I think, uh, I think, uh, let's just take that for example. There is that committee, as I understand it, uh, like ours, I mean, they are they are they can't enforce right. anything. They're just advisory. They they report. They can't enforce so they them. report to the they, select board. They tell the select right. board. Right. So I think, but I think the action it. item is to get somebody on there. Same with traffic yes. safety working yeah. group. So I think that's yeah. advisory. So. And the same thing you mentioned something about the construction that there is a law. Oh, so that bylaw was passed two years ago. Two years it's ago? A, it was a warrant article. Okay. And um, only in the old historic district downtown I mean, and in. And that and, SOH. And, uh, it's gone but you could now come with a new warrant article that encompassed the entire island. Broadens the thing. That, well, yes. That's and a non resident. That's something we could do. Sponsor a warrant article. We could yeah. try we it again. We did it. Oh, you could try again. We could try again. Yeah, right. uh, let, let me just mention a, a couple of things because actionable. Um, is a is a good thing to think about, but as Peter says, I think we first need some sort of consensus within our own group as to what we want to spend time on. But the the two items that I've heard so far today are are noise, and uh, for example, on um, expanding whatever limited expansion that last Warren article uh, created. One of the things I asked is not just limit it to the historic district, but limit it to all the R1 districts. And they wouldn't even go that far. And the, the point being that in my R20 district or somebody's R40 district, you know, you're further from the property lines and the noise dissipates and all the rest of it. But it seemed to me that the basically the historic district and maybe downtown Scottsdale is the same. It's it's all kind of R1 people are very, very close together. So you start out with noise where people are very, very uh, congested and compact and they wouldn't even go that far. But I wouldn't stop to say, okay, find something limited and go after it. As a, and then maybe it's an inch by inch, foot by foot issue. But one of the things we have to do to do that, if it requires a bylaw change, is to find local citizens because we can't sponsor a bylaw change. Well, I guess we could ask the select board to do that, uh, but you need a local uh, citizen. And so that brings me to bikes. Uh, Bruce Mandel is the obvious you know, uh, person. If, if we came up with a series of bike issues, because uh, he's very concerned about this, uh, perhaps we could work with Bruce or somebody like Bruce uh, to get a well-written, uh, limited, likely to pass uh, bylaw on a future warrant. Uh, but if you want to talk about actionable, there are a bunch of different actions. One is just calling things uh, attention to the select board or you know, better publicizing us. Uh, but at the end, for things that really matter, it's probably require a bylaw change. And, uh, and so we need to work well with uh, citizens who, uh, under the current form of government, um, are necessary to uh, uh, bring this to town meeting. This, whatever this is. Well, Ralph, maybe we could agree on one thing to pursue. Well, it's good to focus on one thing. And, and I'm going to make a, a, an abstraction kind of statement. We often, in groups, seek to enforce something, which is from the top down with authority. I, to coin a phrase that prefers to work from the bottom up and the middle out. Uh, and I'm taking Scott's view that sometimes if you can bring a solution that doesn't involve enforcement, it's much cheaper and much more accepted. Example was the offering free noise reduction blankets for noisy units. Okay. I'll give you another example from my own experience running a university where the most common crime was bicycle. Hmm. What do you do for bicycle? Do you regulate and have each bicycle owner register and pay a fee and that uh, pays for a person who goes around and inspects bicycles and enforces the rules? No, the problem was bicycle theft. It's solvable with locks that can't be cut with a bolt cutter. 
and you, what you do, you, you give them away free. And every bicycle owner then gets a free lot and no more bicycle theft. So this is, this is uh, solving problems from the bottom up as opposed to enforcement from the top down. It takes a certain amount of creative thinking. And, and I don't see that happen a lot with legislation that is passed at the town level. One of the things I think we forget is that we are a tourist economy. And uh, I think in terms of making our priorities known <clears throat> to push forward the idea of the traffic issue and, and uh, you know, this idea of limiting uh, how many cars you can bring on the island, that, that seems like that would never fly. But, those kinds of things make a difference in our economy. We have a building economy. Um, and by the way, the I call them, uh, the, uh, who, who does the community wide, uh, promotes the island. Oh, the Chamber of Commerce. Um, yeah, very impressive guy. He might be interesting to mm -hmm. bring into this group um, and talk because the housing economy is big, but that's finite. And the tourism thing is what we live off of. And to say to some of the people in town meeting, and again, this is a PR thing. This is how we present ourselves. This is, if we get up and talk in town meeting, maybe we just talk common sense and that, look, we're in the tourist, uh, tourist economy. We need to address traffic. We can't build every single rotary, but we could have a few pumps extra to, you know, put it traffic areas. Anyway, common sense, short-term, single-minded, mm -hmm actual items um, that makes the town realize you've got to make sure the tourists keep coming if we want our economy. All right, let, let's just finish up. But I, I, I think it's a good idea. I, I, I think with, with leaving this whole topic, what we might want to do is, now that we've sort of identified the major areas, what, you know, what are the sort of the quick, the quick fixes, you know, uh, the, the low-hanging fruit? We ought to, maybe we ought to just all sort of I think it's for the next body. meeting. Well, just for the next meeting, we don't need to kick it out now. We have to send send it in, send it in to Kathy. What what do you see as the low the low hanging fruit that we ought to be thinking about? One of the things I just wanted to ask, and I really don't know that much about it, but zoning is only considered ten every ten years, right? No, oh no, no. Well, there's a big zoning plan coming up. Oh, zoning. What do, what do you mean by considered? That's different. Yeah, I mean zoning. You can change zoning every year. Well, no, but there's a big zoning plan coming up right now. Strategic plan. Strategic, Strategic plan. plan. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Okay. It's not so I'm saying if we have any hot buttons there, this is the window to do it. I'm just saying timing. What, what is, I don't know when, what is, I don't know what details about when. Detail. Um, I'd have to look yeah, have, it up. Right. They have a preliminary one that you can find on the select board website. Yeah, we should probably take a look and see what the timing of that is. All right, finally, and then I, I do want to turn to short-term rentals uh, because our guests are interested in that, and, and uh, there has been some uh, some development there. Uh, the final issue is the affordable, affordable housing, uh, and which is a huge issue, obviously. Um, and uh, it goes, uh, you know, it goes right to it goes right to uh, the issue of this being a tourist economy. I mean, the, the, the affordable housing goes across the board. I mean, for or, uh, but it certainly addresses that. We don't have enough people to service that tourist economy, for example. Um, and um, I, I um, you know, you saw the Act Now group has actually done something that I think is actually pretty good. Uh, this is something that uh, others that had suggested early on. Uh, there was public money in some cities to to uh, encourage encourage uh, those of us who are non-residents to um, rent out our property. Uh, while well, we're not here, effectively for year round, and to supplement, you know, because obviously we wouldn't be getting, you don't, you don't get the kind of income from uh, from the off season months uh, to supplement that to make it to, to make it uh, uh, of interest. Uh, and Act Now have got some money behind it, and apparently uh, is is going forward with that. And I think it's great. That's a great idea. That's a great idea. Um, but um, uh, there are a lot of groups on. You know, there's a lot of housing activity on this already looking at this. So I'm not sure we. We need to be spending a lot of time on ourselves coming up with original ideas, but we had we had uh, Tucker, um, so keep calling him Tucker Carlson, Tucker, uh, <laughs> Tucker uh, in quite a difference. Uh, <laughs> and I think you know we should continue to to to, to monitor. We need to continue to monitor that. But if anybody has any other thoughts on on that before we uh, move off, okay. Um, all right. Well, look, I I do think. I mean, I think you let, let, I mean, a little homework here would be a little, some low hanging fruit. If any. 
Can we do five minutes on VR? Yeah, we, yeah we'll get to that. Yeah, we, we, we have time, but go ahead. I'll okay. save some to start your money. Please. Um, okay. Well, um, I, I, I just want to ask the people who are in the room and on the phone how they heard about this meeting and why they came to the meeting. We'll do a little poll. Of... Okay. Oh, I, I heard about it because I read it in Curry. Excellent. <laughs> we've been non, you know, non-residents for several years and felt it was time to really do a Want to know why our taxes are being spent the way they are? We provide most of the revenues to do the other stuff. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. and I, the five-year comment on the town. I mean, I've restructured Procter and Gamble, Sarah Lee. Johnson and Johnson in two years. Right. We can't restructure a town in five. I can't believe it. Yeah, yeah. so, you know, we've all done it, and it's done when you want to do it. If yeah. you don't want to do it, you have your feet and it doesn't get done. No, but there's also, like a, yeah, but I cynical view is along your line as well, which is, you know, some people might be losing their jobs or they having them re recreated, and they, that, they're not too excited about that possibility. But in any, in any event, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, good, good. Uh, folks on the, who are folks on, on the line, uh, you can unmute yourselves. Penny, would you like to share how you heard about this? Or Daryl then? No, okay. Okay, that's fine. All right, well, I, but I think it's working. It's, yeah, well, um, so um, it, there's no magic uh, formula, although I like people to think there is. I send news releases to the... Uh, to the current and daybreak and the inky and uh, and sometimes they run it and uh, sometimes they don't but we're going to continue to do that right. and we also have whatever issues we decide to focus on um, we have the ability to uh, you know to write letters to the editor to go to various forums and letters to the editor are a very popular part of the inquiry mirror and also of the current, I know, because whenever there's, I'm sure most of us read them. And, and so that's a way to make it as short as you can, uh, more effective if it's shorter, but to make the points you're trying to make. And that's a way to reach the, wider you know, the much wider audience. Right. Right. Good, good. Well, thank you, Steve. And thank you, Steve, Europe. for your efforts. Good. Okay, let me quickly, uh, as we try to keep this on, on schedule here, um, talk about the uh, short-term rental working group and Kathy and Bill could uh, chime in as well. Um, so since we last met, uh, the uh, select board had its final meeting on this and, and approved articles one and two uh, with some minor modifications based on language that was submitted by town council. Um, and um, the the I guess the biggest um, thing to come out of that was a change in the linkage issue. Uh, as you may recall, Article 1 and Article 2, uh, Article 1 is the now is the uh, general bylaw and Article 2 is the zoning bylaw. And um, they were originally linked in such a way that if one didn't pass, neither would pass. Uh, the feeling uh, of, um, of the select board uh, was that um, half a loaf is better than nothing, uh, that there was enough um, uh, good um, regulation in Article 1 that, although they wanted both to pass, uh, seemingly the, 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 the wanting, wanting both to pass, that um, that they shouldn't throw out the baby with the bathwater and let, and keep and keep uh, the, the good things that are in Article Article 1. Um, so it's been delinked uh, in, in one way, uh, one direction, but not the other. So Article 1 and Article 2 if Article 1 passes and Article 2 does not pass, Article 1 still is in effect. However, if Article 2 um, uh, uh, does not pass, I'm sorry, if Article 2 passes, but Article 1 does not pass, it's, it's, it, it, that's moot. it's moot. And Article, new, Article 2 needs both to pass. Yeah, if Article 1, which is first, doesn't pass, then there will be no. Okay. Right, but if Article 2 passes, it can't pass that, without Article 1. Right, without Article 1. Right, right, right. Okay, so that, that's the way that part of it's linked. Um, uh, so it's uh, the what's happening now is that the short-term rental group, which sort of um, uh, retired itself, um, uh, has now been uh, quasi re re reinstated uh, to at least to move forward together to try to get this approved, to try to get both articles approved. Um, and um, you know, our position has always been that that um, 
non-voting taxpayer issues, non-voting taxpayers should be treated the same as as the vote as voting taxpayers, and uh, that's been done. Um, so we really don't have a big dog in the fight going forward. But I think we do feel. I mean, I think the feeling is that they ought to, they ought to, now that we've done it, we ought to, we, they ought to, they ought to pass. And so um, I've been working with the group, and Kathy's on it as well, uh, to, um, to to begin to to think about how to best address this. I'll be talking to Steve to get some of Steve's ideas, um, uh, but the, the messaging, the messaging um, and why it's important uh, to, to see this, to see this done. Um, and so um, the, um, the, the planning committee, planning commission and the uh, finance committee still have to weigh in on this. I'm told uh, by their members of each of those two or organizations on the STRWG and they both uh, are confident that there'll be no problem getting them through planning and finance. Um, and so that um, that will happen. I know finance is meeting on September 21st. Um, I don't recall. Do you know when the planning committee commission is meeting on this? It's all in the, um, it's all posted on the top okay, website. Okay, I just can't recall. Under the, under the special town meeting page, there's a list of the schedule for all those meetings. Um, we don't know what the agendas are, yep. but that's all the tentative schedule. So you have to sort of keep looking when they post the agenda. You'll know if it's on the right. It's on the top. I mean, some of some of the, some of the themes obviously are, for example, in Article Two. I mean, let me back up. Um, the the yes the um, short term rentals, the town believes and certainly has taken this position and you know. And in practice, they are legal. I mean, they're, 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 by, by, by certainly by practice, uh, and they've been going on a long time. And so the, the, the important thing is to try to, to deal with the quote unquote ambiguity if there is such. And article, and then and the sort of a belt and suspender with Article 2 that it's, it's, it's legal. It's clear it's legal. And to do, do away with this neighbor upon neighbor lawsuit business, if that's behind us. And then at the same time, say, hey, look, yeah, we recognize, we recognize that short-term rentals can have an effect on the quality of can have an effect on the quality of life and there ought to be a responsible responsible regulation of that and so okay no court no no more corporate uh, entities coming in to to put in uh, uh, a large series or you know any uh, short-term rentals two you know it'll be one one per owner with some minor modifications on that depending on, on how your how your house is structured whether it's a you know a a duplex or whatever, um, and then um, then there is some there will be some grandfathering um, uh, with those who have already who have already um, uh, been in the short term rental business so to speak uh, during the high during the high season they will be able to continue at nine uh, until they um, they um, uh, sell or transfer their properties outside of uh, state planning. Um, and that'll re then every, it'll reduce to four. Everybody else going forward with new rentals will be will be four. Um, and um, you know, hopefully that'll begin to put the brakes. That's the idea is to begin to put the brakes on this. Uh, people say, oh, there, there's obviously a group and that says, hey, we, you know, you got to put a lot more brakes on right right away. Um, and uh, you know, that's that's you know, the, the problem is that the short term. Problem, not, that's the wrong word, but the issue is the short-term rentals have been a lot historical fact of, of life here, and uh, people have, have have been you know have have done it, have planned around it, and so it's um, you know it's an equitable it's part of an e equity equitable issue, and uh, is it the Nantucket way just to sort of go in there and just you know, slam the door? So there are a lot of issues. Um, it's going to take a lot of it's going to take a lot of education. We we've also been working on FAQs, frequently asked questions on how to deal with it. I must say that we looked at the drafts and you start looking at these drafts and, you, you know, they're more complicated. You know, you start reading this stuff. The fact of the matter is that by and large, um, we need to deal with the big picture issues. Everybody's going to have their own specific question. Those can be dealt with on a one-on-one -on -one basis, but it doesn't make sense to try to put out these big uh, detailed uh, explanations. Uh, there's going to be a um, there's going to be two meetings. The town has said there's going to be two uh, public meetings to try to to explain and to read, to discuss it. One is there's ten tentatively said I think for um, two Thursdays in October, October fifth and October twelfth. There'll be Zoom, um, and uh, they've asked uh, the uh, SDRWG to participate, and we're in the process of discussing discussing that. So 
let me open it quick, quickly to questions, certainly from the public as well uh, on this, if there's anything that we can answer for you. Okay, all right. I guess my main question is, why is there need to be any limit on renters? I think, well- What are they okay. trying to achieve? Well, oh, well, I think you should take, take a look. Well, what they're trying to achieve is, is laid out here, and, and I, I urge you to take a look at it in the very first- um, I know, I know what they say. Well, that's what they're trying to achieve. <laughs> that's what they're trying to achieve. Now, whether they can do it or not is another issue. And certainly, I, 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 I tend to I agree with you to this extent that, you know, when, at the very outset, that was a question. What is, what's the purpose here? What are we, you know, and that was never quite answered. But I think, I do think that in the, um, that in the, um, uh, the purposes intent, there are some, you know, uh, you know, we want to protect the, uh, the ability to, 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 to have short-term rentals. On the other hand, you know, they do create noise and what have you. you want to be able to deal with that and the enforcement on that. Um, and and I think, you know, so it's it, the restrictions, you know, for certainly nine oh, during July and August, is that not a, that's not a huge restriction, really. I mean, that's, I mean, tell me that's something. And if it ultimately comes down to four, well, it'll work itself down and, and you'll see, we'll, you'll see, you know, I mean, for two weeks is eight. I mean, it depends if they can get that or not. So, it, but that's going to be over, over time. And if you're doing it now, you don't have no, your, your grandfather, so you're okay. Um, I, but I can just say in here is yeah. just as a another non resident, we had to move from our home because we had an Airbnb VRBO next door to us every single week. It was, and, and when you're spending 25, 30, 40 thousand dollars a week, guess what? They're not bringing one, they're bringing three families. I'm serious, we've seen eight bikes on the lawn. There's there's beach towels thrown over them. It's like the Jersey Shore, and yeah. we had to leave. Yeah, and so no, it's a, it's a, a little bit of respect for the neighborhood that you're moving into just doesn't seem to exist. You know, it's look, and and, and you in the, the group, it, it's ultimately like everything else, going to come down to enforcement. And uh, this is a you know, this is something that everybody's focused on, uh, and is to okay, is to to to. to Enforcement will be paid through the registration process. So to set the fee at such a level that you don't, you know, make it prohibitively expensive, but you you generate sufficient funds to actually do something and, and get it out of the health department. The health, you know, they're the wrong people to be to be enforcing this thing, uh, at least on the noise and whatever else. But that's that, and and and, and I think the group certainly and the town uh, is focused heavily on this whole issue of of, of noise and and and. and and enforcement it's it's it's, it's not going to be it's it's worthless obviously if you can't if you don't enforce i wonder if there's a moment here for for the consensus on something mm -hmm. which is um the root of this issue is the is is quiet enjoyment mm -hmm. that's what everybody wants mm -hmm. is quiet enjoyment and first of all i wonder if we might get somewhere not everywhere but somewhere by telling renters what is expected of them in a common format. You know, maybe there's an adoption of a we, renter's... We, we have to... We, uh, Kathy, okay. Good, good. Kathy, great to do this. Yeah. And uh, so, so that was number one. But number two, I wonder if there's a possibility of self-enforcement here, mm -hmm. which is, you know, a presumption that you tell your renters that if there is a complaint under you know, under this, that there, the presumption is going to be, we're not going to rent to you yet. Right. And we're all familiar with self-enforcement on eBay and on Uber and all these things where mm -hmm. there's a rating that's visible. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's another thing, is that there's a renter's rating. We rent the we that the renters get rated. rated right. right. They all get rated on every day. I don't know about the they are but, but you know the the, the real estate agent sure. who obviously the biggest part of this, yeah. Yeah, you know, awesome. could 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 have a yeah. could have a lot. Can I share, you know, so um the the town has, has canned the vendor that they had hired a year or so ago to put the registry up. Um, back at the beginning, I just knew what these guys were doing. I, I know the technology underneath and I'm like, it's not gonna work. They're mm -hmm. never gonna be able to pull this off. But again, it's under the Board of Health. That's yeah. not their wheelhouse. Right. And it failed and they finally decided, the finance director said, okay, we're going to flood, they're never gonna deliver it. I'm gonna go out and find some new vendors. So, um, they decided they needed to include real estate people who know how they do rentals, and then somebody like me who knows how the platforms work, and also the technology under it, to to look at vendors with the town. So we were invited this past week to see demos from two different vendors um, who are used to cleaning up after 
the vendor that we use that um, <laughs> big business yeah and so they they both they're they're a little different in their their approaches but they both offer that a lot of the stuff that you're talking about in other words they can not only scrape the data that's out there and it's going to be a challenge for anybody to find the real estate information because they don't post that they post the listings but you don't, they don't post the booking dates so you can't know where the online platforms you know when people's houses are booked. They pulled my house up um, right during the demo and showed all the stuff that they could see. So it's good in that they'll be able to do the enforcement to make sure people are registered. Um, they'll they'll be able to see that. Uh, they also run a hotline, so they'll be the people that you call when there's a complaint. Um, and they will look at, they also, you can see all the complaints against the house. You can also see, on the flip side, you can see that there may be a Joe complainer, and that's all he does is every Tuesday morning he calls in to complain about something. So you have people who you need to control that as well as, as the other way. So everyone's protected. And then you'll have data right there that shows, you know, the compliance issues, is the complaint level going down? Um, all those kinds of things so that you can manage it. And all of this is outsourced. And one of the vendors actually even offers um, training for the homeowners, for the, the hosts for the, for the renting. On, on, and the good neighbor pledges that, that are out there and education on how to rent responsibly and also the things that should be in your listing. Um, so it's not just the, the noise issues, but any kinds of things that are there on how to treat your neighbors. So, you know, I think a whole package of carrots and sticks and enforcement um, and, and looking out for not only can the town get what it needs, but does it make that 85 year old person who short term wants their house like how do they fill out the form and what do they do and mm -hmm. how do you deal with that kind of stuff? So it's I think it's it's going to be coming and there'll be stuff like that and the, the goal is to have it operational by January. Okay, um, good. Is there something where they have ramification? Let's say you get three calls on one house. Then it will go investigate and defer, determine whether it's in other words, you can upload videos, you can upload pictures, you can. You can, so, and then you you have to fill out you have to identify yourself as the person complaining and then they will follow up and they will verify or will not verify what what's been reported and then if you have the town already has in place in law right that's now not, yeah. that's not new that you have to register and you have to and you, and if you have x number of, you get fined so and you then get you, get have, you do get fined after three times and then and then they can deny your renewal or they can take your license away that Excellent. already exists in the law yeah. That was passed last year. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. all of that is in the okay. product and the suite of services that these yeah. vendors provide. So the town is not going to have to. Will be, will there, well, that's the question. Will there be? But will there? Will there be somebody sort of quote unquote on site? In other words, somebody available to be you know to, to come out there. Yeah. Uh, if there's a, a. The plan is you. They they recommend having one town employee. Yeah. That's that's what they do is go out and yeah, I think the police that, will go out. Well, police won't. In some yeah. case. No, yeah. they do actually go out. Um, really? I thought they, that's, oh, I, yeah. I, I, we had a situation, okay. and, you know, my wife just said, look, call us next time. We'll be there in 15 minutes. Yeah. Okay. And okay, good. That's the good to hear. It basically says, if you have a problem and you're the host, if your neighbor has a problem, you call me first. Okay. And if I don't deal with it in a few minutes, then you yep. call the police. Okay. As long as the police are coming, I didn't realize the police were actually showing up. I thought they were saying. You got a barking dog, they come yeah. out. Sometimes they hit the bike path. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Which is as long, right. that's fine. As long as somebody, as long as the people, I mean, my experience has been as long as they know. Have to call and complain. Yeah, as long as people know that somebody's going to, you know, that there's going to be a consequence for their for their conduct at right. the time. Right. Like they came with the dealing and with children. Do, I mean, you know, it's got to feel comfortable yeah. calling. They have yeah. to do yeah. it because otherwise the town has no record sure. that there's a problem and they can't enforce that. Right. I so, think this is really good, Kathy, yeah. because there are people who just thought, I can't say anything. Right. So I hope this is publicized right. so people yes. know. But there are also people here are some who may things. not want to submit their name. That's uh, they can't have it both ways. Well, yeah. you is, can't, it on, yeah. is it online or calling or both? It's both. It's both. Yeah. And the online, you can't yeah. be anonymous. So have you, you, you have to put your name. Yeah. 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 Or that's, you can make the rules however you want. Well, but that's very effective. Yeah, I think, I think, I think that's I think, good. Yeah, no, it's got to you know, you need to be able to put your name. You should put your name down for a serious Same way. No, they're not going to necessarily disclose that. Homeowner, no, but the town, yeah, no. right? That's great, yeah, very effective. Okay, there's effectiveness. All right, um, I try to keep this on schedule. We usually try to wrap it up around 11 30 if we can. Anything else before you just a question? Uh, the, the, the group that is opposing this act now, well, it was that meeting, yes. yeah, 
Yeah. What what do they what do they think? Why are they opposing? What do they think they're gonna gain? Well, you know, uh, they they don't they don't want they don't want SD, they don't want short term rentals anywhere. Okay, so they want their goal is to make it illegal. In other words, to make, to, to to try to have. They don't think that's going to have an impact on the town. Well, the fact of that, well, they they are not focused on the financial aspects, which are serious. I mean, they don't, the, the 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 revenues. We were just talking about this yesterday. The revenues to the town, at least ten percent of the revenues are coming from from short term rental registration. To say nothing of the economic impact on on the business people, which which is significant. So, you know, it's 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 short. I mean, from my perspective, it's very it's very short sighted. They 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 don't want to pass Article Two because they want they're hopeful they're hopeful that some judge will say, well. But then it's you know because there's you know somehow that it's it's illegal and then they make some sort of decree that it's illegal. Uh, I think the fact of the matter is that any judge now looking at it will say even if Article Two doesn't pass because it takes two thirds. Right. Article you know you're not what, you know what are you you know people are regulating something that they think exists right. So Article One will will hopefully boost uh, and give give strength to the argument that it's it's, it's already in existence. This belt and suspenders. Uh, and, and, and it's already regulated because of Article Thirty Nine. So absolutely, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think you know, I, I think it's you know, and I think to tell you the truth, Act Now has has quieted down a little bit, they, and they turn their attention to what I think they it, it makes sense as we talk about that program. They that's sent great. the mailing to every voter. Yeah, well, we, yeah, that was sometime. Yeah, they did. That's there's like two weeks ago. Yeah. So they're still at it, but yeah. not as. Not uh, as I, think, I think the fact that. What the committee you're on and the con the the carrot and the stick, I think that will alleviate some of Act Now's concerns. And right. that's something I think that we the short term so. mental work group can make no. known. Yeah. Um, that's a good idea to, to yeah. think about that. Yeah. So, um, yeah the, the issue is that if the zoning our zoning in this town makes no mention of any kind of rental right. being a legal use of a residence, short term, long term, there's no word, the word rental doesn't Anywhere. appear, and so it's ambiguous. And, you know, it's obviously, I mean, the ruling could say you can't rent your house ever for anything. Yeah, that's what that won't happen. <laughs> I don't think. That's anyway, okay. Uh, anything else before we wrap it up? I, when, when, do we, when do we meet next? Okay. We don't have to. All right. So let's, all right. So we, we, so we now move into, well, we, we now move into post Labor Day, right? Um, so the idea, I think, would be to do it not every two weeks, but every month. And we can do it by Zoom, but that's, Maybe everybody's agreement on that, and we should probably pick a the same, you know, the first whatever of of, of every of every month. Um, and uh, do Saturday, do, does this time work for people uh, off season as well? Oh yeah. If it does, then why don't we say the first uh, the first uh, Saturday of every of, of every month through the through the winter? Do we have to look at uh, something before the annual town meeting this year? Well, we have, we'll have one, we'll have October, we'll have October, the first weekend in October, we'll have the first weekend right, in November. The, when oh. is the town meeting? November 4th? November 7th. 7th. November 7th. 7th? Yeah. So there's a Saturday before that, and I think Saturday in October might be the one. No, no, no. Is that the first one? Seven? Yeah, it's early this year. Early this year. Okay, well, on, uh, the first well, Saturday is the 7th. The one, so. seventh. Yeah. Okay, well, uh, how many people are, how many are on island that day? I'm on island. Anybody else on island? Well, why don't we, we could we do well, why don't we do a combo then yeah. we let's let's plan on meeting to have coffee here yeah, and as long as there's yeah, one, one person to open the door here yeah then people yeah so oh, this was yeah. Anyway. right so let's plan on october 7th here well, the and then and then i'll be here for a town meeting you're gonna be here for that yeah. all right so that's november but the, that saturday is november what first i don't have that it's the fourth the fourth okay but that one i uh, yeah that probably how many people would be here on the fourth and so I think that one will definitely be a, just straight Zoom. Okay. okay. So we want to, and you, you want to have Peter reach out to Chief Pittman for the next meeting, or yeah, why don't we, or? yeah, why don't we reach out to Chief Pittman for the next meeting? Does that make sense? Yeah. And if you can't do it, then maybe we can do the next one. Yeah. He's actually he's retiring. When in November? Pretty soon. As soon as he can, I think. Okay. He'll be he's going to live here. Oh. Okay. So he's not going in. Yeah, he's not, but he's not like he's less likely to talk if he's out. And oh, maybe not. Well, uh, he's, really not gonna, <laughs> he's not going to want to bother me. Right, right before they yeah. use. Oh, so oh they have to yes, 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 right. yes. in October. So after that, he can't really say anything. No, no. All right, let's try to let's try to get him for the. Hey, is Peter Halley still on? Yes. Yeah, Peter, I'm, I'm, I'm here, and uh, just to fill you in quickly on on uh, the chief, uh, uh, we wrote to him 
I don't know, last month uh, about uh, a traffic issue. He responded in under 24 hours. Um, he uh, said that our suggestions had already been tried and uh, the it's real problem, and this has to do, you know, traffic in the port uh, whenever the ferry comes in. Um, and uh, our, our, uh, our, our proposed solution had already been tried. It takes too many people. And the real problem is that uh, you were talking earlier today about all of the uh, sort of supplemental uh, summer police force, the non-professional police force, is that nobody listens to them. And, uh, and uh, so if they tell somebody to move along or to stop crossing a street or anything else, um, uh, it, it's really almost a civics issue or a civility issue that the police uh, face in, in a lot of this mass stuff. But I, I think he would be great if he would come and speak to us. I think the question is, what is it that we want to hear from him? Uh, so that in the invitation, if there's something specific that this group uh, wants to hear about, um, uh, th that would be great. You know, what, one, one thought is, if you were president of the United States about to replace by somebody else, what is the note you would leave in, on the uh, desk for your successor? Uh, but uh, that may not be the situation. I'm just given the comments that when it came back to Peter that, you know, yeah. we've tried that and yeah. maybe we need to have somebody else speak. No, I think that was just on that one. It was just on that on that one particular issue. I, I think there are a bunch of issues that that, that, that he could speak to. I agree with Steve, though, if, you, uh, if we're getting a new person in, having that new person come into this group and make ourselves known to that yeah. person would be... But, but, yeah, but that's not... That, you, start. But, that, you, but you won't get him until... No, no. Like, but the there's other people. But I think I think we hearing. I, I happen to think, like, you know, hearing from the outgoing chief as to what the problems were that he faced. Uh, I think that's very valuable. Yeah, what are the problems? You talk about the things that need to be enforced, yeah. and the you know, just, is it useful to have something that's prohibited but not enforced? Uh, well, what can we do? You know, if you can't enforce it, what can we do to help? Uh, what yeah. What are the easiest yeah. things to solve here that yeah. that, that haven't been solved? Yeah, we but, can have both. Yeah, if I. Yeah. Him and then six months yeah, under the new term. Get, get, get exactly, exactly. Right. Good. Let's All right. We have a second choice and take that one. Well, Peter, are you coming back? Just out of curiosity first. Peter, are you are you going to be on the island or not? I'm not. I have no plans to be on the island then. I think uh, at least in one of those states, I've planned to be elsewhere. Um, but I am, will make myself available just like today, uh, sure. virtually. Okay. Uh, All right. Sorry. So the question is just a second choice. Uh, if, if Chief Pittman. May I suggest, is there interest in pursuing this idea about the bike committee and uh, reinforcing or not? Well, I think, I think we should. Talking about I think we should. I mean, I think what the idea would be, if this, you know, it would be who if someone wanted us to join the bike committee, they ought to, they ought to do it. Uh, we ought to have a representative on there. But just to, to meet with them, I don't think makes a lot of sense. I don't know. It was something that you had suggested, and I thought them. it was good, too. Audit. Audit. Yeah, so Audit. attend their, their meeting. meeting. So attend their meeting. But they have no meeting scheduled. So you said far. that. Yeah. So a quick question: the the bike committee is it like our committee? It's advisory yeah. committee. Yes. 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 So the 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 one if somebody if we have a person who wants to devote some time to that, and I think it's a you know important subject, um, isn't the proper procedure maybe to get in touch with Libby and say you know we have a strong interest in this committee. Uh, would you consider uh, appointing one of our members, and who might that be, uh, to uh, serve on this committee, which, uh, uh, you know, it, it, we, we could be helpful because a lot of the people on the bike paths tend to be uh, not here year round. <clears throat> a liaison as opposed to. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Another thought for a speaker would be the editor of the Inky. Uh, Josh Balling. Yeah, absolutely. Josh, good guy, and uh, after seeing the editorial, I like to find out who the hell's writing the editorials. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was that was a good letter. <laughs> that was good. Yeah, I think Josh. I mean, I think, why not? Let's see. You know, let's, uh, Josh will be a good guy. Mm -hmm. Sure, I can help you there too. By the way, I know pretty well. Did we come to any kind of bottom line to today's meeting? Moving forward to next meeting, where are we with this? I thought we we're gonna. I thought what we we're gonna do is. Um, Come back with the low hanging fruit. Yeah. What, what do people really see as something that we can do on low hanging fruit? I think um, 
I think we, we, I think, um, you know, that was exactly what would then direct us to what, what we, what we want to do. I mean, and if there's something that's not low hanging that you really want to focus on, we ought to write that too. But I think that's, I think that makes the most sense. Maybe it's peace. Yes. <laughs> that's, next on, that's next on the agenda. Okay. Oh, no, so one thing that I left off the list, I think you were just discussing where do we take this next? Is that right? Yeah. And so one of the things that I left off, off the list, I was remiss, uh, but certainly well uh, reminded of it, is the fire fire safety issues. We had the chief before, and there is concern that there are there, there really two oh. concerns I'm aware of. One is the Scotset uh, fire station, which uh, could use revival. Uh, the other uh, was uh, something uh, I think Scott brought up uh, before the, the fire chief came, and that is, you know, what happens if a fire arises in the uninhabited areas, and how does one defend that? And the uh, the chief was chief spoke about both those subjects, uh, but I think keeping fire safety, especially after Lahina. Um, a, on, on sort of the front burner, so to speak, no pun intended, uh, is is something that we ought to uh, 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 pursue. You know, while I was thinking, yeah, one other thing we're thinking about while we're thinking about it, um, I'd like to see us bring in the land bank for a mm -hmm. meeting yeah. um, and, and chat with them about what they're doing, how they do it, and uh, what what uh, other alternatives there might be. There might be. Uh, What's that? That's the list. And How about that's a good idea. Conservation Foundation. Well, that's, that's yeah. I think uh, those are separate entities. You know, they're totally, totally separate. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. I, I think the land bank's got the property. Oh, the land bank, yes, but the other is important yeah. too. That's a private group, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 The land bank is part of the town. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. So there's a yeah. difference. Yeah. I'm not interested yeah. in private organizations. You know. Okay. Yeah. But anyway, all right. So that gives us that gives us something. That gives us a start. Obviously, keep the keep the uh, items open. Anything from yeah. the public that either on zoom or here that, that oh, thank you for representing us i hope you found it helpful please come back we will. we'll tell you we'll see how oh, that could be worth you come back you know? <laughs> <laughs> and I we enjoyed it. good okay we'll have we'll have uh, donuts next time <laughs> okay anything else so when's our next meeting uh next meeting is the first saturday october 7th uh, october 7th, 7th. Oh, might not be able to be all right yeah. okay um, th 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 thanks everyone and we hope you thank you Thanks a lot. Hands rise. Enjoy, Peter. Uh, yeah. Motion to adjourn. Is motion to adjourn? Adjourn. Second. 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 Any opposition? Seeing none, we're adjourned. Okay. No one. I've learned. I've learned. Thanks. 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 But not any different. You're down at the Yeah. Okay. So we can have. Well, we, yeah. Well, I, you know, if, 